how to see names and numbers and prophesy them accurately is our concern here. This refers to prophecy at the forensic level. Now, forensic prophecy is rooted on prophetic codes. There are about 46 prophetic codes known at the time. Now, there is the item required for forensic prophecy that is not spoken about. And this is what I call prophetic codes. And virtually every prophet who prophesies with accuracy make use of our prophetic codes at one point or the other. Now, let me describe what prophetic codes really are. Then we we'll move into some examples of common prophetic codes that enhance prophesying at ten point level with precision and accuracy. So listen, prophetic codes can be likened to a man who has a hotel with 46 rooms because we have 46 prophetic codes. A number is written on each of the doors to the rooms from number one to number 46. When you come to door number one, what you see there is number one on the door. The door is yet to be opened. When you open the door and go inside, you begin to see the things that are inside. When you are standing outside by the door and you are just looking at the door, that is just like prophetic code one. But when you open the door and begin to see the things that are inside, that's when we talk about courts. The court is you entering in and begin to see things inside. That is the court of the code. The code is you standing by the door and seeing number one. Prophetic code two, door number two. Prophetic code three, door number three. But when door number three is opened and you enter in and are privileged to see the things that are inside, that is what I refer to as prophetic code. That is, with prophetic codes, you see things predominantly. Prophetic codes deals with the visual prophetic sense and the audio prophetic sense. There are occasions where I prophesy and so much accurate or I mentioned somebody's name and somebody's name. Men of God, you are 100% accurate. How come you know this name? It was because I engaged a particular prophetic code. So each prophetic code has a prophetic code attached to it. A code is like a film that you watch or like a television or like a placard or like a billboard or like a signboard that you watch something written on it or something plain on it and then you read it out to the audience or to the person that you prophesy to and the person says yes man of god you are true you are right that's because you are looking at a particular chord and then reading it out to the hearing of the person you prophesy to so this is a preamble of the prophetic code so get me clearly I said when i'm prophesying using prophetic code number eight it's like standing in front of door number eight and once the door is open i can only see as far as wide as room number eight is that corresponds with as far as prophetic code number eight can carry me my ability to see things clearly in that room is enhanced by prophetic code that's the graphics these are the things you see there is a table inside room eight there is a bed there there is a television there there is a chair there there is a picture hanged on the wall and lots more all these points to the use or the engagement of prophetic code. Young prophets or people who are coming up prophetically, in most cases, tend to be able to use prophetic codes without the understanding of prophetic codes. And even at that, they maintain a level of accuracy. Yeah. So we are going to look at a number of prophetic codes. The first code I want us to look at is the code that enables you to see objects. This was the one that Jeremiah was privileged to make use of upon his calling in Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have well seen, for I am ready to perform my word. Let's move on. Verse 13. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it's facing away from the north. Then said the Lord to me, Out of the north, calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the earth. This is about sin. The prophetic sense engaged here is a prophetic sense of sight. And the prophetic chord here 
is dealing with objects. So literally on the cord that was presented before Jeremiah, what he was seeing was a graph of a branch of an almond tree. So when he saw it, he was able to recognize what he saw. I'm seeing a branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said, you're well seen. I'll hasten my word to perform it. Again, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, what do you see? The second time, and Jeremiah said this time around, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. And the Lord said, out of the north shall calamity break out upon the inhabitants of the earth. What Jeremiah used to forgetting this accuracy and get the commendation of God here while prophesying first time was the use of prophetic cord. This cord was there. His prophetic sense of sight was open. He looked into the realm of the spirit and what he saw was a branch of an almond tree and was able to prophesy about it. Now, this prophetic cord can be observable when you are using prophetic code number one where you put everything within a circumference and you are able to prophesy by proxy. Or this prophetic cord can also work for you as you prophesy using prophetic code number eight, where you now can rewind time back to about 3,000 years ago or fast forward time to about two or 3,000 years ahead of you or more. What this prophetic cord help you to do is to paint a picture of things for you, show you the picture of these things. Sometimes they are moving pictures. You see them either in a placard placed side by side by the person you are prophesying to or atop the head of the person you are prophesying to or on the chest of the person you are prophesying to or an angel of God is standing by the side of this person you are prophesying to and the angel shows you a placard or a board or a video in the realm of the spirit and you begin to watch what is happening there and then you disclose what you are seeing. So prophetic accuracy can be enhanced when we are versatile with the use of these materials. So as a student prophet or as a prophet, when you're looking at somebody or the spirit of the Lord brings your attention at somebody in the congregation or in a live broadcast and you look at the person, chance is that a God will appear there in front of the person. You're going to see things. God wants to talk to you about this person. Look at what is there and then bring out. The moment your prophetic sense of sight is activated, you'll be able to see the cord of this person's case. Long before I knew anything about prophetic code, I was using prophetic cord and I was getting it accurately. There was a woman who came to a meeting in 2013 and I was in a prophetic session. And when I looked at this woman, Right by the side of this woman, there was somebody who was pouring red oil away from a can. I saw that person pour the oil away for the first time, pour it off the second time, pour it away the third time. I had the interpretation as soon as I was seen. The Spirit told me that red oil, you see, being poured away corresponds to pregnancy three times, miscarried now. And I said, woman, you've miscarried for three times. And she said, yes, accurate. How did I get it? By looking at her cord and prophesying to her. So there are times when you are head on with a case you're about to prophesy to. The Spirit of God will bring the prophetic cord to you. An angel will present the cord to you or the cord will just appear atop the head of the person, the chest or somewhere else. And you begin to prophesy, reading the cord or viewing the cord. This is, is about seeing objects like was the case with Jeremiah. Zechariah the prophet also was one of those prophets that used this prophetic cord. Zechariah the prophet used it when he talked about, I saw the four horns that scattered Israel, Jerusalem and Judah and that no one could lift up their head in the land. Then he looked again and he saw four craftsmen coming in the realm of the spirit to rebuild. Now what was he using? He was using the prophetic cord that enhanced the visualization of objects. I call this prophetic cord, prophetic cord number one. It helps you to visualize objects. In prophetic cord number two, you hear sound in the realm of the spirit. The blend of sound and visual. Just like the Samuel prophetic code, where prophet Samuel can stand here and begin to hear sound of joy, sound of music or something ahead of him. That was one of Samuel's major prophetic code that he made use of in his time. Dealing with prophetic cord that is responsible for this, there is a blend between sound and the visual. 
you are both hearing and uh, seeing the same time. A good example can be that case of Jeremiah prophesying Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 2. Then Pashur struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it happened on the next day that Pashur brought Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has not called your name Pashur, but Magog Mishabib. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes shall see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive to Babylon and slay them with the sword. Yet Jeremiah said, God doesn't call you Pasha. He calls you Magog Mishabi. This prophetic sense engages or just the sense of hearing. Where Jeremiah was able to tell Pasha the current name that God calls him that by implication meant a terror. That was the implication of the new name that God called the man Pasha. You shall be a terror to yourself, to your friends, and to your people. And note this, terror again shall come upon Israel. The king of Babylon will come and take away everybody in Judah into captivity. Now, when he was talking to Pasha, the name Magog Mishabi popped up in the realm of the spirit. Now, why was Jeremiah able to get the name? It was because he had a Hebrew clue to the meaning of the word Magog Mishabi. So God was able to communicate with Jeremiah on that name via sound because he didn't say, I can see Magog Mishabi written about. He said, God calls. Calling means that it was sound that Jeremiah had. So to be able to use this second prophetic call, you must have been familiar with the words in quote that will pop up in the realm of the spirit to your hearing. And then you hear them. And as you are hearing them, it is corresponding with some other graphics you are seeing. Now, when Jeremiah was talking about you shall be a terror to your friends and to the people, he was actually in the real sense visualizing how this man was going to be terrorizing them. There are occasions when you are prophesying as a prophet, as you are speaking or as you are seeing it, or as you are hearing the voice, you are seeing the play of what you are talking about at the same time. This is when you are using prophetic chord number two as attached to the Samuel code. Let us look at another example from Isaiah the prophet. Now, in Isaiah chapter 8, from verse 1, Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take a large scroll and write on it with a man's pen concerning Mahashalal Hashbaz. And I will take for myself faithful witness to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberekiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Mashalal Hasbash. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be taken away before the king of Assyria. Engaging this call here, Isaiah had a word pop up in the realm of the spirit, Mashalal Hasbash, to be the name of a son that he was yet to produce. And he went to the prophetess, his wife, as husband and wife, and they conceived and gave birth to a son, God said to Isaiah, name him Mahashala Hashbaz. And God said, before this child will be old enough to say, my father, my mother, the riches of Samaria will be taken away from before the king of Assyria. You get that. The word pop up and Isaiah was instructed to take a board and then write on it. Can you see that? When the word was popping up, Isaiah was visualizing the written word at the same time. So you hear, blend into visualization, and then from visualization, he was instructed to take action. And what God told Isaiah was exactly what became of the people of Damascus. So there are times when God is talking to you, what you are hearing is corresponding with what you are seeing in the realm of the spirit. Sometimes the sound fades into the visualized format of it, or the visualized format of it fades away to leave you with sounds in your ear. That's auditory prophetic sense. In either case, it's a blend in a prophetic chord that called prophetic chord number two. 
and it works like i said with the Samuel prophetic code where you can stay here and perceive the sound of joy or the sound of mourning people are crying you begin to hear them from afar they are crying there people are celebrating you hear them from afar no sound in the physical realm is said but you can in the realm of the spirit perceive the sound from afar and know that something is happening somewhere there or something is about to happen 10 days to come there's going to be a funeral here and people are going to be crying here you perceive it in the realm of the spirit yeah that is how this prophetic chord the next prophetic chord i want us to uh, look at is the prophetic chords that enable you to see names in the realm of the spirit this time a little bit away from seeing objects or hearing names that pop up in the realm of the spirit the first category i want to handle here with seeing name in the realm of the spirit on a chord remember i said a chord is like a theme that you look at or a placard in the realm of the spirit now you're looking at somebody and on top of the person you see prosperity or progress or the name of the sickness tuberculosis written there on a board atop the head or on the chest or by the side or an angel just show you and you begin to read the problems this person is coming in with i'm narrowing this a third prophetic chord to the one that enables you pick names now the name is written in full and these kind of names written in full are the ones that you are familiar with although the person you are prophesying to you may not be familiar with the person but the prophetic code you are engaging you are familiar with it so you can now look at the name straight and then pronounce it this is john this is james this is jonah this is andrew the other picture of prophetic code i want to expose you to is this one has to do with the use of letters that is to give you names but in this case because you are not familiar with this name maybe you are uh, a nigerian and you are prophesying somewhere in south africa and china this name is new to you to be able to know this name and call it out the letters have to appear because you know the alphabets already god will supply them in form of alphabets the alphabets now becomes the objects painted or arrayed on the placard in the realm of the spirit because you know these alphabets you can put them together technically and get a name out of the alphabet the same thing to numbers that can either combine to make a phone number bank account number national id or house address number and the likes anyone that you are not familiar with will usually appear in the realm of the spirit as alphabets that are spreaded as objects and this as alphabets will be brought together by you as highlighted in the realm of the spirit you put them together and begin to work with them so the code actually aid the functioning of the code the code like you're standing by the door you open the door inside the room you're going to see everything inside that's where the code now comes into play its role it reveals to you the things that are of concern now beyond prophesying names and things there is this other aspect of prophetic code that has to do with either a pre-play of something that is about to happen you're watching a tv i'm with you but maybe you're back me facing a particular location where the spirit of god is talking to you uh about me from and you're watching something like tv in the realm of the spirit and that's telling you everything about me you watch everything then you look at me and you begin to prophesy i've used that prophesying to people on several occasions or i'm praying with a group of people and god wants to talk to me i'm going to face a particular direction sometime eastward and I'll begin to watch something that is a t something like a television in the realm of the spirit and I'll like disclose what's happening. It's like a pre-play of what's about to happen or a post, uh, a, a, a post play. That is, this thing has happened in your life long ago, but I'm looking at you right now and it's like a TV set just pop open in the realm of the spirit uh, and then pop on in the realm of the spirit and begin to show me everything about you from childhood to adulthood and i begin to tell you stories about your life things that have happened in your life in the time past and you're like wow how come you know all this it's because i'm using this particular prophetic chord that has to do with replay of what has happened in the past this is an advancement from the world of knowledge where you just hear something that happened in the past can you see that when it comes to spiritual gift? But prophetically, this is how we do it, using prophetic God. 
a replay of what has happened in the past. It pops up like a TV, and I begin to watch your life and tell you the past. You feel like, you're like, wow, how come you know that I just watch your replay in the realm of the spirit? Or a replay that's something that is about to happen revealed to me that is oh pop up in pop on in the realm of the spirit and i'm going to watch it and i tell you you are going to marry on so 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 day you are going to go to so so town on so so day an appointment is coming on so so day i'm watching uh a television something like a television in the realm of the spirit and it's a prophetic court that i'm watching actually now what is happening right now in your heart i can watch it on a screen in the realm of the spirit a screen just pop on and I begin to watch a screen about your past replay a screen about your future replay a screen about your present just plain and i'm watching and i'm telling you what exactly is happening with you at the present time where you are standing with me at the material time and talking about the material time either i'm doing this using prophetic code number one and then watching your cord on the screen in code number one or I am in prophetic code number eight, looking so much back into your ancestors and talking to you using this code of replay to tell us what has happened sometime in the past. Or I am using Samuel prophetic code where I can now look ahead and tell us of the mood swings that will be coming in in terms of either a sound of joy, sound of mourning, and so on and so forth that will be coming up. In the realm of the spirit that is after you are gone like when someone told this man you will leave me and you will meet the company of prophets of the prophesy and the spirit of god will come upon you return to another man and he began to prophesy if a prophetic cord was to be attached to that it would be a pre-play that is someone was watching a pre-play of what was about to happen this is how we use this prophetic cord so the understanding of prophetic cords help you to be able to gain a stamina or mastery with prophetic codes this is the secret about the use of prophetic codes when Naaman came to meet Elisha and Elisha had healed him and he was going after getting his healing of leprosy Gehazi the servant of the prophet Elisha went after him to collect gifts and when Gehazi came back and Elisha asked him in 2 Kings chapter 5 25 to 27 Gehazi said your servant had gone nowhere Elisha said to uh, Gehazi did not my spirit go out with you when you went to meet that man to receive gifts? Is it time to take gifts? He replayed what happened in the spirit realm and he was able to browse him and tell him exactly where he was coming back from. So this how this prophetic cord is being used. So don't be afraid to make use of prophetic cords as a prophet. It is in existence, we use it. You can look at you like this. The moment I'm looking at you, I look at the cord bearing your case atop your head or beside you or an angel is showing me a placard bearing your case or a screen just appear pop on in the realm the spirit now but you know watch what's happening and i'll begin to disclose to you jesus prophesied this way when he told Nathaniel, i saw you when philip was calling you when you were still under the fig tree you know it was prophetic court that jesus engaged i pray that your eyes be opened so you can engage the use of prophetic courts as you prophesy your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears because prophetic courts works best on sight and uh, hearing. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.